Here at CES, we do occasionally get behind the wheel of a vehicle. And today I've got behind the wheel of a Renault Master, a vehicle that is normally only sold in Europe. But I'm here with Philippe Devine from Renault. And this vehicle is here for one very special reason. Philippe, would you like to tell us a little bit about this vehicle as we take it around? Yeah, this vehicle is fitted with a hydrogen uh, range extender. Right. Uh, and allowing it to uh, uh, extend the range of the original uh, Master ZD from uh, around 100 kilometers to more than 300 kilometers. Tell me about this, this idea of having a, a range extended mm. hydrogen fuel cell system on board because mm. A lot of people who like the idea of electric vehicles like the idea of electric vehicles because they're not hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. And a lot of a lot of people who watch this channel would turn around and say, you've actually made this vehicle worse. So tell me a little bit about the decision to do that, because you've been working with Ferruccia on this, correct? Yes, we have been working primarily with Symbio. Uh, Symbio has been developing the, the, the fuel cell and, uh, and also uh, uh, studying the adaptation of the fuel cell to the Master ZD. We have done that on the basis of the Master ZD because it was relatively easy. Uh, the fuel cell is just uh, being used to recharge the battery and uh, therefore the incorporation of the fuel cell into the vehicle uh, was uh, relatively easy. Why does it make sense? It makes sense on such a vehicle uh, because of the weight and the size of the vehicle, of course, uh, and the relatively limited autonomy uh, that is granted by the original battery. We have about 80 uh, kilometers to 100 kilometers uh, minimum uh, autonomy, depending on the conditions. And thanks to the fuel cell, we have been able to extend it to uh, more than uh, 300 kilometers. Wow. So a lot of people would say, okay, 300 kilometers of, of autonomy, that's, that's fantastic. Why would you just not put a larger battery pack in? But there's a reason for yeah. not putting a larger capacity battery pack in a vehicle yeah, this yeah. size, right? Yeah, of course, uh, for, for, for this vehicle in particular, uh, you have the 3.5 uh, tons limitations and uh, payload has a lot of, uh, a lot of value. Uh, so a bigger battery is a heavier battery. And, uh, and this affects the, uh, the, the, the payload of the vehicle. The second point is uh, the cost of course of the battery and uh, the third point is the range as i mentioned before not only do we have 300 kilometers of range you can refill and thereafter you can drive 500 1000 kilometers if you want and the fourth point is that this vehicle is not intended to be used at 300 kilometers on a daily basis this vehicle is intended to be used at um, about the capacity of the battery so means Which 100 is about 100 km kilometers 100 kilometers without having the range uh, limitation means if one day you need more range, no problem, you know you can rely on it. And I think it's really important at this point to, to note that your average car driver yes. would look at this and go, you know, 100 kilometers, that's 62 miles, that is terrible. Mm. Or, you know, 300 kilometers, that's only 100 and, uh, what, 120 miles, no, sorry, it's 200 miles. Mm. Uh, it, that's terrible. but. The reality is these are delivery vehicles that are, are designed for delivery use, Correct. that are being used in urban cities across Europe and yes. in other markets around the world, yes. where they drive less than 100 kilometers a day in their daily use cycle, correct? Yeah, yes, that's abso you're absolutely right. Already today with the full electric versions, most of our customers are satisfied because they can use those vehicles even with a, with a limited range. First, they repeat every day, so they know that uh, they, they, they know the, the, the range that they need and they know that they will be able to fulfill their, their mission on, on, on the daily basis. Secondly, most of our owners are fleet owners and they can dedicate vehicles to certain missions mm -hmm. and they perfectly can dedicate a, a, a certain number of the vehicles, a certain amount of vehicles from, from their fleet to the missions that they know those vehicles will be able to fulfill right. over the day. So what you're saying is, uh, it's really important if you're watching this outside of Europe, you probably don't know this, the Master has been around for several decades, hasn't it, as a vehicle yes, in, yes. in an internal combustion engine form. Yes. And so this vehicle is available as an internal combustion engine Correct. vehicle, as an all-electric ZE model, and now in limited form as the, the range-extended hydrogen ZE. Correct. So you plug it in at night, yes. as you would normally. Yes. You get the 100 kilometers of, of, of range, yes. as you would normally, yes. with 
the electric version Correct. and then you can add that range extender when you need it without diminishing the payload as much as you might if you added an additional 200 uh, kilometers worth of battery range because in a vehicle this size adding 200 extra kilometers of of, of range in terms of batteries would be 60 to, 60 to 100 or yeah. kilowatt additional kilowatt hour right. required and uh, this would be a weight of uh, close to 500 kilos let's say or more, and or more that reduces your payload, payload to three tons yes instead of three and yeah, a half yeah. tons well yes payload is the global cross vehicle weight it's yes. the payload we have uh, yeah. three tons. but anyway it reduces a significant amount of the payload because you have already the vehicle empty uh, load uh, uh, of about let's say two tons so a uh, global payload of one 1.5 tons if you take 500 kilos off the available payload it reduces it to less than one ton uh, to a certain extent even uh, to 800 or 700 kilos which makes the vehicle useless. Yeah. so for those who are watching you might not know this but we have uh, this this experience I know I'm driving round and round in circles and I apologize for that this is this is Las Vegas and we're not allowed to it's very difficult to put this car on the road in the United States because it's from France it's French plated and everything else there's a whole number of hoops that you have to go through to make that happen but in terms of how this feels to drive this feels just like any other ZE vehicle I can hear a whir from from behind me is that the hydrogen range extender no if it comes from behind it's not the range extender because the uh, range extender is in the front wow <laughs> so, so that's go. general vehicle noise that i yes. can hear behind me wow it's just a uh, general vehicle uh, there is no uh, active system uh, in uh, in the back of the car so uh, there is uh, no uh, no no noise that is generated by by the traction chain or the range extender that is coming from the back of the car let's talk about the cost analysis for yeah. for for running costs based on you know your average fleet so let's assume you have a, a fleet of, of vehicles you've got some 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 regular internal combustion engine masters you've got some BEV battery electric vehicle masters and then you've got one of these so how do they compare cost analysis yeah. wise uh, so the, the, the cost, the, the sales price of uh, the electric master is uh, uh, still somewhat uh, significantly more expensive than the combustion engine one. But uh, the big advantage of the electric vehicle is the running cost. Uh, thanks to the low cost of electricity, the running cost of uh, electric vehicle is uh, uh, the energy cost is up to uh, three to five times uh, less expensive. Uh, than a similar uh, combustion engine vehicle. Uh, for uh, hydrogen, uh, it would be comparable under current condition, depending on the cost of hydrogen, um, country by country, etc. But it would be comparable to a combustion engine. And that is the other reason why we went to range extender. Mm -hmm. The purpose of this vehicle is to be used on battery. You plug in your vehicle, you use the full capacity of your battery, and you can really use the full capacity of mm -hmm. your battery because you know that you will not get stopped by the capacity of the battery. Right, so it and eliminates the range. It eliminates anxiety. the range anxiety and limitation. You use fully the capability of the battery. And then the hydrogen only secures that in terms of variability or the day you need it, you can run on hydrogen for the additional kilometers that you need on top of the range that is granted by the battery. Therefore, in terms of uh, running cost, you have the full merit of the electric vehicle plus mm -hmm. the, possi the full possibility uh, of, uh, of the, range, uh, the range extension uh, based on hydrogen. This is showing me that I've got nearly a full battery pack as yeah. well and I've got uh, 147 kilometers of usable range right now which is just towards that 80 something miles 80 or 90 miles in addition to the the full 60 miles or so of the battery pack and this is only a 41 percent full hydrogen fuel cell tank so let's stop up here and let's have a look inside and you can talk me through some of the things that make this different compared to some of the other uh, vehicles uh, that, that, that I've seen from Renault in the past and in terms of driving it you know it really is just as simple and just as quiet just as pleasant to drive as any fully electric Renault. Thanks. 
have oh, wow. located under the floor. Wow. So there's absolutely no uh, uh, diminishing of the load bay space, the cargo bay space. And that's that's really that's really impressive. I expected there to be kind of some reduced capacity inside. Now, how does this compare to the floor of um, a regular Master Zeddy? The floor of the Master is one of its unique selling points, being a traction vehicle. The floor is low, and it is a very well accepted uh, feature of uh, of the vehicle. And the floor of this vehicle is uh, absolutely identical to the floor of a combustion engine or a conventional ZE version. And you can get a pallet truck in there just like you would any of the other no uh, impact master. on the load volume. Presumably everything is nicely protected and, and hidden of under Of course, there. it's oh. under the floor, it's protected, it's protected by the by by a, a specific shield and, and, and there is absolutely no uh, no impact on the, on the vehicle. And you said earlier on that the range extender sits up front, so it's out of the way yes. of uh, the rest of the vehicle. Yes. And you fill up here, is it? In the yes. So you have the filling places. On this side, it's the charging. OK, so, so you've got a standard type 2 charging inlet there. Exactly. Yep. And on the opposite side, we have another uh, filling uh, flap. And what it's pressure is that? This one is 700 bar. 700 bar, OK. Yeah. Which is becoming the standard, isn't it? Which okay. is becoming the standard. Right, right, right. And you can just see a very conventional uh, high pressure filling type. That is the hydrogen range extended Master Zeddy. I'm really glad that I've got to give this a go and try it out. It really doesn't feel any different to any other electric vehicle. For private vehicles, range extended hydrogen fuel cell vehicles make less sense than just having a larger capacity battery pack. But for vehicles like this, it makes a real difference. I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. We'll be bringing you more content from CES very shortly. Until then, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, support us through Patreon, buy us a coffee on Ko-fi or visit our swag store. I'll be back soon with more great content. But until then, keep evolving.